We all know that editing portraits can be a little bit tricky, especially when it comes down to their skin tones and finding a style that works with your model. With that being said, today we're hopping into Lightroom to hopefully make that process a little bit easier for you. A while back, me and my friend Renee went to this nearby carnival to shoot some really colorful portraits. So we're going to be achieving this look right here. Let's just go down to the bottom right, click reset, and start from fresh. So starting off with the basics, we have my highlights, shadows, and whites. We're just gonna move these a little bit and find the sweet spot where I like it. Move the contrast up a bit. I really wanna make my subject pop off of this. So I'm gonna try and enhance her as much as I can. Nothing too crazy, just a little bit of adjustments there. Um, what I like to do for a lot of my portraits is I'll bring down my clarity to give it a little bit of that glow and then up my texture just a hair. So, so there's a little bit of texture pop. After that, I'll swing down here into my calibration section, which is really tricky because it absolutely destroys your colors but if you do it in the right way it works so what i like to do personally is my blue primary bam my green bam and my red bam this just creates the colors that i like and makes the canvas just a little bit easier to work with so we're gonna go back up into the tone curve create my three dots here by the way after you create your three dots you can create a custom point curve here you click save i already have one it's called points Bam. And then you're going to hop in here and just move these back and forth until you find something that works for your image. So I like to have my midtones up a little bit for my portraits. Maybe fade the blacks just a hair like that. Maybe make the highlights glow a little bit more. And if you click and hold this little eyeball right here, you can see the before and after of your tone curve. We haven't done too much yet. We might hop back in here later. So after that, we're going to go down to my color grading is what I do next. Usually for my shadows, I like to bring it in here in like the greenish yellow area and then find a sweet spot that really pops her skin tones because you don't want to ruin your skin so if you go too red it looks gross too blue eh. but like for me personally i like to go around here ish and then if you click again you can go up and down on here i like that right there mid-tones are probably gonna go a hair blue just a little bit nothing too crazy and then my highlights i also like to go blue because i feel like highlights especially in an image like this they're kind of popping with blue and i want to make sure that i can adjust that as much as i can so i like that teal color right there go up and down i think that works again if you go to your eyeball here you can see your before and after and it just it's just a little bit subtle it's subtle, but it does a lot, I feel like. So going down to lens corrections here, this was shot on my Canon EOS R before I had my Sony. We're gonna just balance this distortion out, add a little bit of vignette to really exaggerate her. And then the little slash key underneath delete, you can see before and after. So far, it's already looking pretty insane. There's a new tab called Lens Blur. So we're gonna apply a lens blur. And basically what this does is it creates more background blur than your lens actually produces. I don't like to go too crazy with it because if you go too crazy, it just looks fake. So with that being said, we're gonna go a little bit lighter on it. So the lens blur amount, you can just go up and down here. And then I think I kind of like it right there. You can also boost it. You can add different bokeh effects. We're just gonna go with the regular one. I don't think it needs anything too crazy. And then down here, you you can change the focal range which basically makes your foreground blurry or your background blurry obviously for this picture we want our background blurry i kind of like what that does looking at before and after look at that obviously this was shot in a 1.8 but just giving it that little bit of oomph on the lens blur kind of kind of makes it pop now i'm going to go back up into my color mixer and i'm going to tweak these colors just a little bit back and forth and find a sweet spot that works with this picture so let's see a little bit of green here on the left side will go there orange is a bit tricky because you don't want to mess with your skin tones too much there's a little bit of red in her skin so we're going to bring it down just a hair to really accentuate the contour in her face i think we're going to bring down the orange just a little bit because i don't want her skin tone popping like crazy like the orange is really really popping you know maybe up the luminance a little bit by the way if you like this little tab that i have here right here usually by default lightroom just has this then you have to select saturation and select illuminance. If you just click all, that's how I like to see it. It helps me visualize it better. You don't have to do that, but that's what I like to do. Let's see if a gradient would work well with this one. Maybe here, bring up the highlights just a little bit. Okay, let's exaggerate a little bit more, bring down the shadows on the bottom, potentially, potentially. Okay, just a little bit, nothing too crazy. And bam, I think we're done. This looks crazy. Look at that before and after. Holy crap if you haven't shot at a carnival before especially for portraits the amount of lighting and colors that you have to play around with is literally endless but that might be it for this one i think we're done and then usually once i'm done editing all my photos i'll go down to this middle section called noise reduction click denoise and then around like 20 percent ish works for me i don't have to go too crazy with the denoise that it makes it like cartoony and then you can also see if i zoom into like her nose and stuff like that it just enhances it a little bit more so we're gonna click enhance and then we should be done i don't think there's anything else i need to do to this picture i don't want to mess it up because i think it's quite literally perfect that before and after is 
insane. Really making your subject pop and really blurring the background, giving it a lot of distance. I think this picture came out really well. So let's hop into the next one. So hopping into our next picture here, obviously it's still Renee at the same location, but now we're on a Ferris wheel, completely different lighting. And also with this picture, I recommend you pick one of these up. If you zoom in here, all of the lights have a little bit of star to them. I have this like $10 star filter linked in my Amazon storefront down in the description. This little star effect just makes a lot of your portraits pop or like car photography or even landscapes too. But like, it just gives it this star look to all of the lights and I think it looks pretty freaking good. So this is the next picture that we're gonna edit. Bottom right, let's click reset and start from the beginning. As per usual, we're gonna just hop into the basics tab, change around with the highlights, the shadows. I wanna bring up the shadows a little bit to make her pop, the whites a little bit to make those lights glow. I'll bring down the blacks just a hair, maybe up my contrast. And that's just very little, very little, but we'll, it should work for this one. Moving on, same thing. We're gonna bring down the clarity, just a hair, nothing too crazy, cause I think that looks pretty ugly. I'm not gonna lie. We're just gonna bring it down a hair bring your texture up just like four ish go down to your point curve select points bada bing bada boom going back down to my calibration select 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 gives me those colors that i'm looking for going back up after that i'm going to change my white balance just a hair to match her skin color because we don't want to go too far from the original you really want to make sure her skin tones are staying intact that's going to be the lesson for today's portrait editing session is keeping your skin tones correct because when it comes to editing portraits specifically it's very difficult to achieve an editing style without messing up the skin tones so that's something to really really keep in mind when we're editing so continuing on we're gonna go down to the color grading section same thing that i usually do we're gonna put the shadows in like the greenish area like right there go up and down on that find the sweet spot mid-tones i'm gonna go blueish again and if you zoom into her face here if you change these mid-tones the difference between the blue and the red you don't want to go too crazy in the red or too crazy in the blue but finding that sweet spot right there ish works for me and then the highlights the same thing i like to stick to like the blues right there ish i like how that looks again select the eye before after i feel like the color grading tab really just evens out your colors if you see before it's a lot more like reddish and then letting go there's a lot more greens and her skin tones look correct so proceed going down to the lens corrections here again i was shooting this on my canon so i have my 50 mil and then we're gonna just change the distortion to where it looks good like right there give it a little bit more of a vignette bada bing bada boom i think for this image i'm gonna go into my masking create a radial gradient on her select it like there and then top right click invert so it does everything except her and i'm going to bring down the exposure just a hair like right there ish to really make her pop as a centerpiece right here so before and after already i'm liking it i'm liking it i'm really making those blues pop in the background i'm really making those yellows even and look good i like that i like that okay Let's keep going. The thing we haven't touched yet is the tone curve. So let's mess around in that a little bit. Oh yeah. Make those highlights glow. Make those mid tones glow a little bit. I bring down just a hair in the shadows. Again, nothing too crazy in the tone curve. Some pictures need the tone curve a lot and some don't. Um, a lot of these portraits don't really need a crazy tone curve because if you go too crazy, I feel like that just doesn't look good or that again, before, after just a little bit of pop and hair more in the highlights. Like okay 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 finally let's slide down to the color mixer and mess around with these colors just a little bit i think we're gonna bring down the yellows i don't think the yellows need to be that crazy bring down the orange too just a little bit to where her skin tone isn't absolutely insane maybe in the hue selection make the yellow just a little bit more to the right where it's green Ooh, the blue slider i can change this background i think i want the background more like like right there and i'm gonna desaturate those blues so they're not the main focus and then up the luminance like that maybe up the luminance and the yellows too i like how that's pops like that like how that pops and i think we're basically done a little before and after look at that wow that looks pretty freaking good if you ask me this is super fun i'm not gonna lie i don't i don't think there's anything else i want to tweak i think that looks pretty freaking good look at that i think what the calibration does a lot down here is it really just like bleeds some colors together so like in this area on the left side here it's more purpley and then I made it a little bit more blue in the background, really making the subject pop from the background. And I think that looks really, really well in this picture here. And moving on to the final image for today's video, we have Renee in front of a Ferris wheel. And what I did, which is really cool in this one, and you can do for your portraits as well, um, this little reflection in the bottom left here, all I did, check this out, right? All I did was I grabbed my phone and then I held it up against the lens. Um, I don't have a camera here to show you, but like, let's say that this is my camera lens. You kind of just hold it like this and give it a little bit of reflection to go off of. And that's how I created this right here. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is go into the crop tool, bring this line down right to her eyes to make sure that third is right there. Make sure she's centered. 
and I think that looks pretty freaking good. Up the contrast a little bit. Let's bring down the shadows, maybe just a hair. Bring up our highlights and whites. Just like the other ones, we're gonna bring down the clarity just to make that little glow pop, hair in the texture. Bada bing, bada boom, we're looking good. And the tone curve, we're gonna select points, coming back to that later. Back to the bottom. If you couldn't tell here, I have a, I have a little bit of a process as to how I edit my pictures. Bam, calibration, bam, bam, bam. Okie dokie, back to the top. We're gonna fix the white balance. I think like right there, a little bit warmer in the skin like that. Go into our color grading tab, into our shadows. As I normally do my shadows, we're gonna go into like a greenish yellow, probably like right there. Find that sweet spot on the slider. I like how that looks. The mid-tones, we could go blue here, but I think the blue is a little bit too much. I don't wanna make her skin pop off of the blue. So I think we're gonna go a hair more red and orange like this. Find that sweet spot right there works for me. And then the highlights, I always, always make sure my highlights are more of a bluish like that. Look at her skin tone just start to pop. So nothing too crazy, but just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. Again, shot in the 50 mil. Make sure the distortion works. I like how that looks. A little bit of vignettes right there. Going into our tone curve. Let's see. I feel like the tone curve's gonna really pop in this one a little bit more. I might fade the blacks just a hair. I kind of like how that looks. Right, I don't want to go too crazy on the tone curve in case I want to come back to this later. A little before after just a little bit more glow now let's slide down to our color mixer there's a lot of colors in this image so i think the color mixer is going to really really make a difference in this one so let's see oh yeah oh, look at that teal look at that teal pop yeah remember you have to be careful in the orange and red slider you don't want to go too crazy in the skin tones just look at her cheeks real quick look at her cheeks when i move this orange you don't want it too red or too yellow so you have to find that sweet spot I think that's like right there-ish. Same with the red. Again, look at our lipstick. Really orange lipstick, really red lipstick. I like the red, so let's bring it down to like right there-ish. Purple slider actually has a lot going on here because of all the blue, so let's find that. I think for this one, I'm actually gonna go back into my tone curve and select the R, G, and B points. Usually I'll just select this middle spot and go back and forth find that sweet spot i think that works right, not, not too much green a little bit of blue action a lot of blue okay so i'm gonna bring i'm gonna bring a little bit of the yellow out i bring down the yellows i usually bring down the yellows a lot in my images because i feel like it just looks gross that's just me i don't like yellow in my images that's just me personally all right before and after so far wow look at that look at that difference shoot okay so off rip let's add a radial gradient on her because i really want to make her pop again so bam select invert so it selects everything except her we're gonna bring down the exposure a little bit maybe up the whites because i still want it to glow and then maybe even with this remove a little bit of clarity so it pops a little bit more yeah i like that look at that Whew. i think i could use a linear gradient here where the shadows already are make it a little bit darker just to exaggerate the shadows and then exaggerate the highlights i'll show you in a second we're gonna bring down the shadows bam like that another linear gradient opposite side kind of right there bring up the highlights a little bit maybe even the exposure just a hair nothing too crazy i like that yeah, maybe a hair more green tint i like that so now i'm kind of in my final stages i don't think there's much else i need to edit maybe just a little bit of tweaking in the actual colors themselves maybe up in the luminance for the blue right there you know just finding just like fine tweaking if you will you know what let's go down to this lens blur click apply and see what the lens blur does for this image let's see let's see blur amount Ooh, I kind of like it. I don't want to go too crazy because I think you can notice it. Let's see it before and after. You know what? That looks pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I like that. I like that. But if I added a little brush right here on top of her hair, a little bit of warmth. Would that look weird? And then before and after, I think we're looking pretty freaking good. Um, I don't think there's anything else that I would change here. We add the lens distortion. We had the colors really making the subject pop off the background. And then the biggest takeaway I feel like in this image is grabbing your phone and really just putting it up against your lens and creating that little flare effect that really pops in this image here. So yeah, the little before and after, I think we did pretty freaking good here. And that about wraps it up for today's Lightroom editing tutorial. So hopefully that helps three completely raw images start to finish showing you my editing process as to how I do things. And hopefully you can take a little bit of this information and use it for yourself. And speaking of, I have my very own personal Lightroom preset pack linked down in the description. It comes with 10 completely unique presets available for desktop and mobile versions and 10 original raw files for you to play around and practice with. I spent a lot of time tweaking these presets, making sure they hit every single editing style, whether it's portraits, automotive landscape, or anything under the sun. So let me know how you like those bad boys. But either way, hopefully you enjoyed today's video and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.